Okay. How are you, Hussein? Thank you very much. It's been a long day, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so where are you? Uh, I'm right now I'm in Sydney, Australia. Okay. Uh, Hussein is an uh, amazing scholar and you can Google his name and then you will see significant number of publications recently in JAMA and in Lancet and so many other peer-reviewed journals. Uh, particularly, he's very much interested in global mental health and more so in uh, artificial intelligence. He's going to be one of our keynote speakers during Global Health Day in June of, 5th of the June of 2023. Uh, Hussein, uh, go ahead. Okay. Uh... Thanks, uh, Dr. Sadiq, for providing me this co-learning opportunity where we can learn together. Uh, it's five minutes, so I'll make it short and then be with you in uh, question and answer. Uh, the core message of the article that I'm going to present is quite obvious. A broader and timely interpretation of the term health equity. The author makes an example of um, COVID-19 related papers where few publishers uh, decided to make all papers free access. And he mentions that as a positive experience and then concludes, if we can do it in an emergency condition like COVID, why we can do that for other health uh, conditions like non-communicable diseases or NCDs, HIV, Ebola, whatever, whatever. And then goes beyond this stage and mentioned that what about health-related information and health intelligence? So um, when, if we can share everything about COVID and then in the next step, we can share, we, we need to share everything about MCDs, HIV, whatever. What about the other uh, and the all health-related information? Why we cannot make it free access to everybody? For example, it could also extend to a point that some people argue that in, in the time of the crisis, why we couldn't, like what Alex says. So uh, the patent of the vaccines also are negotiable in, in that context. So when people are dying, why we should be we should stick to some rules and uh, we couldn't save life at that time. So uh, the final and the core point of the article is a quote from a philosopher, which says, "There could be no justice without fair opportunities for all." So. Health is not just uh, health security is not just about physical and healthcare devices, you know, access to the care, whatever. It also includes information, especially in the third world when practitioners may not have enough funding and enough earning to have a decent life. Set aside the funding to get first-hand materials, publication, whatever. Uh, to conclude, I think this is the main point but also there are some other points in the article I want to highlight first is uh, mentioning the preprint dissemination during COVID uh, for those who may not be familiar with the concept preprint is simply not yet peer-reviewed research findings released by the authors uh, it helps it helps uh, rapid transfer of ideas and results uh, and uh, basically it started from 1961 and then in 2017 with a large gap we have the first server for preprints uh, of course uh, there could be some collateral concerns to this issue but uh it it, it doesn't uh, underscore their uh, validity uh the final point i want to mention here is I'm talking to you, dear students and the other persons around. Um, 
as not med just medical student. I'm talking to you as the next generation of global health minded medical practitioners, regardless of your prospective position. Believe me or not, you will be with global health whenever you go, whatever you do. And I ask you to have a powerful signature. Goodwill is not enough. You need to be strong. You need, you need to have a powerful position. Become stronger and stronger. Collaborate with other people around the globe and grab attention. And if powerful enough, act like what he did. By he, I mentioned the Richard Horton, the author of the paper. He has been the editor-in-chief of The Lancet for the past 28 years. And I'm not going to uh, go into the details, but he has done a lot for defending the science and has been loyal to the science in, in numerous occasions. Um, and this is the point. If you want to be a good person, it's not enough to just be a good person. You need to uh, stay positive even if you are disappointing now or disappointed sometimes. You need to get strong to help people around. The other point is about preprints I want to highlight here. The next time you see a paper, whether is it in Lancet or a preprint, it doesn't matter. So some people argue that, okay, uh, the, the preprints is uh, mainly, they are not peer reviewed and it's, uh, it's not valid or whatever. But I think you need to have the capability of critically appraise the articles, whatever it is, even, even in the Lancet or New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, if you dig in, sometimes you will find some uh, basic mistakes and it happens. It's science. Okay. So that's okay for preprints as well. So I ask you not just looking, um, um, there, is a, there is something that says that don't judge a book by its cover. It's also valid here, I guess. And I think, I think instead of removing the preprints from or resources, it's better to learn and uh, understand that we need to make some questions about every policy document, every uh, article that we see that does it make sense. What about sensitivity? And what about the statistical analysis analysis that is being done and checking them all the time, whatever is published, peer reviewed or not, and this will help. I think I'm done for now and I'll be with you in question and answer. Thank you again, Dr. Sadiq, for uh, this opportunity and uh, I really appreciate it.